All righty, Captains. There was a question in the Facebook group earlier today about blending between layers. So what I've got here is a small um, setup that's going to be blending between our layer one, which is our red, and our layer two, which is our cyan, <clears throat> using an envelope modifier. So if I go all the way to the left, we're going to have only one of the signals playing. And if we go all the way to the right, we're going to have the other playing. So I'm going to bring this back across the left. And just to show you the layer setup, pressing F2, we have layer one. Now layer one is just a fractal noise running into an image 2D. Go jumping back out. Layer two is again a another different fractal noise running into an image 2D. And number three is our mixer, which we've got here. So what is doing this? So basically we're sending a zero or a one out on this envelope. Now this envelope can be thought about as an AB bus. So when it's at zero, it's on the A side. And when it's at um, one, it's at the B side. So the output of this envelope here, you can see it will go into a range remap an envelope down here. Uh, they'll be continue doing the logic to turn these on and off. And then it also runs across here into a composite sources. And you can see if I bring this to say point like point three, you can see here that our composite is basically blending using the composite mode between these two layer precomps. So what are layer precomps? Uh, if you come across to your nodes here and type L-A-Y-E-R pre, you can find a layer precomp, drag it, drag it in. Now, if you shift and double click on a node, you can bring up a preview of what's actually running inside it. So this is just a layer precomp here. I've taken the top layer here. So in the source layer, I've selected layer one on this one. And down below, I've selected layer two. What I've also done is checked on the optimize memory usage on idle, which means that when it's not doing anything, it's not going to be hogging all of your memory, which is great. And you can see also that I have a, an element in here that's being controlled by some modifiers, and that element is the update active. So when that is set to a one, um, this will update and play like normal. When it's set to zero, it will not update. And hopefully that means it will not use as many resources. As you can see, both of these are currently updating. But if I move this all the way to say the A side at zero, you notice that our layer one is playing and it has an update active of one, but our layer two is not playing as it has an update active of zero. So how do we get these to change, all right? So what we wanna do is think about it like, um, like an AB bus, like we said before. So let's say, Instead of looking at a zero one, we want this side to be all on when it's all the way across for our layer one. So we need to flip the zero to one to a one to zero. And we do that by a range remap. So we're saying whenever the fader is all the way to the left, we actually want it to be 100% on. And when it's all the way to the right, we want it to be 100% off. And that's into here. The other thing we're doing in here is saying, all right, I want to have this condition modifier, which is controlling this update active, it'll send out a zero or a one. So one when it's true. So I only want to send out a one if it is greater than zero. So as long as this is more, sorry, as long as the range remap here is outputting more than zero, it should work. So if we bring it all the way across the other side, this range remap will actually be outputting a zero and we won't have any movement here. But if I nudge it ever so slightly across, come back into the range remap, you'll see it is now I'm putting out a 0 0.00732, which this condition sees as greater than zero. And it's going to punch a one out here. And that one is going to say, yes, we want you to animate. So bring it back sort of in the middle in the mix here. So that's how that works. So as long as it's greater than one, at this point, a greater than zero at this point, it's going to send a one out to tell it to run. Now the bottom one, we're going to run in opposite mode. So we're actually going to leave it pretty much as it was. We don't need to flip it using a range remap because we only want this to play when this slider value here starts moving across to the right. So here it is a one where it's a one anyway, and here it's a zero where it's a zero anyway. So no need for a range remap. This envelope modifier is just here to make it look more uh, continuous between the two. And then we're going to feed that out into a condition modifier and say, again, it's not moving because it is not greater than zero. It is zero. But if we come across here and again, we nudge it ever so slightly, 
this condition modifier will say, hey, look, this value here is greater than zero, so send a one, and that one's going to be update active. So bring it back into the middle again. And because this envelope value here, so here you can see it is 0.38, is run into the composite sources blend amount, 0.38 there, we're using that to blend between the two looks. So as long as it's somewhere between the zero and one, both of these will play and that source will work. But the moment we get all the way to one side, one of these sources will stop running and you'll save some resources. That'll come out in the composite into an image 2D node, and then that can be exported out. So I hope that makes sense on how to use layer precomps to blend between different layers inside of Notch. Cheers and have a good one.